We have Kauai Pianos in the Spotlight. Today we're presenting 10 things you should be aware of when you're shopping Kauai. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please check out our other YouTube channels, look at our other videos, subscribe to our content, leave us comments. We love to interact with you guys. Ted, look how loud this piano is first. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's not even playing in this loud. I know, it's so loud. It's like I need, I need headphones, I need earplugs. It's so loud. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a kawaii. Um, as you guys heard at the, at the intro, we are talking about kawaii pianos today. They are in the spotlight, so to say, and this is very much in the spotlight. But Ted, you were saying something earlier that was just, it was super interesting because we were talking about how we're not going to compare Kawhi to other pianos and bring in all these other names, but... It's hard to, uh, to discuss Kawhi pianos and um, not mention, or through their history, not, not talk about Yamaha, Steinway, and Baldwin. Which are those four well, right there? Those between... are factual considerations in Kawhi's history of uh, developing the piano and, and research and technology, and also part of their... It's their manufacturing history. It is. And so we are going to talk about those 10 things today that we really think you should consider and know about when looking for the right piano. And if you are looking at the brand Kawhi specifically, these things might help you realize what kind of a company Kawhi is and kind of where they've been and who they are and what they stand behind. Very interesting history. And so the first one, Ted? The, the Yamaha Kawhi connection. Yeah. So... It's really interesting. There's a legend of Kauai, really. It's, it's one of those things where history was happening before people's eyes and they didn't even realize the impact and still it's incredible to look back. So you think about in Japan, a small village, Hamamatsu, Japan, and there is a, a guy who's a watchmaker. He makes watches, he makes reed organs, very talented young individual, Mr. Yamaha. And he is, out, the, the legend goes, He's outside and he sees this kid pedal by on his bike. Or not, it's not a bike. It was a paddled wagon. Pedaled wagon. Pa paddled cart. Um, yeah. And so the paddled cart, he sees this and he's like, oh, that's really cool. Uh, and so he goes up to the kid and he goes, who built this paddled, paddled uh, cart that you're riding? And the kid goes, oh, it was me. And immediately Yamaha's like, whoa, this kid really knows what he's doing. That kid ends up being Koichi, Koichi Kawai. And... Yamaha takes him as an apprentice, as an apprentice, right in the very early stages of manufacturing pianos in Japan. They hadn't even manufactured any pianos. They had manufactured reed, reed organs. organs and uh, something else, uh, some kind of toy thing. Basically. Yeah, well, so so Yamaha had this. He was a, he was a builder and really wanted to take on building pianos. And so Kawhi was there very early and worked for Mr. Yamaha in the early stages. They were the same research and development that built the first piano in Japan. Very cool. Kawhi has been there from the very, very beginning in Japan and has this amazing rich history to Yamaha, which are the two best brands out of the Japanese market when it comes to pianos. Correct. And so what happened is Yamaha passed away in 1916. And in 1920, in the 20s, they talk about there was a decline in, in interest in piano in Japan. Um, and so Yamaha started, the company Yamaha, uh, Mr. Yamaha had passed away, but the company Yamaha started diversifying what they made. And in that, Koichi Kawai was like, this isn't really my, my jam. He wanted more special detail into the piano. And so what he did is he took seven people with him and they started Kawai in 1927. And so that was the birthplace of Kawai and why Kauai has this rich 90-year history, and really how it's tied to Yamaha, and how these both are amazing manufacturers, and where the beginning all starts from. Well, it wasn't really like a plant walkout either at the same time, because when he took his workers and uh, Koichi Kauai left, he actually had orders to fill for Yamaha mm -hmm. as like a sub-manufacturer, so at least he knew his plant would have work, and uh, the profits would come from whatever they would do over and above that. Um, the work was there to get the company going, but the, the research and technology and the, the more precision development of the piano is something that Kawhi wanted to do, which Yamaha at that time was really gearing toward the, uh, the production line mm -hmm. of pianos. So number two on our list is the 90-year history, family business, 
Kawhi is still a family business. It's very interesting because we also, as Alamo Music, are a 90-year family business, owned and operated. Um, just very fun to be a part of a business that continuously lives in a community, but also builds off of family and really strong morals and really, really cool things. So Yamaha, or sorry, Yamaha, Kawhi, Koichi Kawhi, his son, Shiguru Kawhi, and his son, really took the research and technology to, to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the early development was uh, the quality and production of manufacturing. And that led to uh, real competitive stakes along with Yamaha. Both Kawhi and Yamaha started selling pianos here in the U.S. quite heavily in the 70s. By that time, Yamaha had been here. But in the 70s, it was really kind of the decade for Kauai. Mm -hmm. Because uh, by the time you get to the 1980s, there are a lot of colleges and music universities that have Kauai pianos as their core rehearsal instruments uh, throughout. Yeah, so, so very cool. They, they lived through the legacy of their family business and have a very strong kind of nucleus of who controls the decisions behind Kauai's manufacturing and their research and development through that. Uh, so today, Shiguru Kawai's son, uh, Hirotaki, Hirotaki, Kawai. Hirotaki Kawai, sorry, names jumbling up in my head, but Hirotaki Kawai is the president. He's been the president since 1989, is the president today here in 2020. Just a really cool thing to see how interested the family and how much they care and love for what they do. And so just incredible instruments. That's number two. So getting kind of out of the history of it. Well, included in that is putting the first name of uh, his father, Shiguru Kawai, on their lead piano. And that's something that part of their research and technology has led to saying, this is the best piano that Kawai can manufacture, and here it is for the world. And it does compete on a level with, is one of the premier pianos on, on the planet. Yeah, and so Ted is, is hinting at our number three here. <laughs> The first name of Shiguru Kawai, which was installed on their premium highest end pianos, really today lives in the top echelon of pianos. You think of Fazioli, you think of Steinway Hamburg, Bosendorfer, and just recently, because it, it's only been in production for about 20 years now, is the Shiguru Kawai. And so, it's like. Always the top picked by all the competitors. There are more people, more players, and students at competitions will choose the Kawai piano. So number three is really understanding their top product and what it, what it signifies. So you alluded to this. In Japan, a very honorable culture, it's very important to only, if you're putting your first name on something and saying this is Shiguru Kawai, if you're putting your first name on it, you're saying, you're basically putting your foot down and saying this is the best thing that I can create or that can be created and you're saying, challenge me on this. That's exactly what it and, is. And so Shiguru Kawai, for many years, there uh, was developing and researching, how do I make a perfect piano? How do I make the best? And, and they focus really high on the energy of the instrument. So they talk about this energy constructed within the instrument. How do I contain, control, and really resonate? Get the maximum amount of energy to the player at his fingertips. And so they can have complete control over the expression, the tone, the timbre, and everything that goes with it. And part of that comes with their developments mm -hmm. uh, through the research and technology. It's, it's incredible. On some of these Shiguru Kawais, or on all of them actually, it has, uh, it has the wood on the spruce is aged over 20 years on all of them. So they take their finest quality ingredients, if you will, and put it together and they really craft. And when you buy one, it comes with a pamphlet of this is the engineer who built this exact piano. He signs off on it. It's just incredible, the whole process. An amazing, amazing instrument. If you've ever tried one, you know what I'm talking about. Just you put a player on there who's never played one or heard of one, and they just immediately fall in love. Well, the pride and craftsmanship is really displayed when you play one after the other after the other, and the consistency and the production and the manufacturing is just, I mean, very, very desirable. As a player, it's just a very unique instrument. And so understanding that top quality and how it trickles down, how they put that in their digitals, how they use that technology in their other instruments, I think is very important. And going along with that, I, I think there's a really cool story here um, as, our, as our number four. Who went to Kauai and says, hey, we trust you as a piano manufacturer. We are looking for a product in this price point. We're looking for a product offering for our buyers or potential buyers. Can you do this for us? Yeah, you know, part of that was uh, the first, the first uh, 
company to company relationship after Yamaha Kauai that Kauai had was with the Baldwin piano manufacturers. And they were, for one time, uh, one of the leading top producers and manufacturers of, of pianos. Uh, they were very competitive and also compared to, uh, on an equal type basis, the top tier Baldwin pianos with, with the top tier Steinway pianos. Mm -hmm. And they shared a lot of similarities in their construction. But when Baldwin wanted to make a uh, competitive but very uh, efficient and precise piano, they contracted with Kauai to build their Howard series of grand pianos. Mm -hmm. And uh, that had a tremendous amount of impact for North American piano sales when, when those Howard pianos came out. And even now, as you know, we sell a lot of uh, used instruments. Those are preferred instruments when they come through here, those, those Yamaha, um, I mean, the, the Kauais that are built for Baldwin, the yes. Howards. So the Howard Company and also the Boston Company from, Sto from Steinway um, were both contracted by Kauai. Kauai. And so you think about these two top tier American companies, Steinway and Baldwin for, I mean, if you've ever seen any used pianos online, which I'm sure you have, or your grandma's piano, they're usually mm -hmm. a Baldwin or, or a of a subcategory of Baldwin. So these two top tier American brands both went to Kauai and said, hey, we need you to build a piano for us. The whole Boston line, since 1991, the Boston line came out. All of those were always built by Kauai for Steinway, which is, if you know anything about piano, Steinway is thought of as this top, top level piano. It's the American piano built in New York. And they have a great affordable option in a Boston, and that is coming directly from Kauai. And before that, Howard by Kauai was also being manufactured. So our number four has to be Kauai is sought after as a reputable builder for other companies, not only for themselves. Just incredible, incredible history. Yep. Going in with the technology as well, there's something we haven't talked about. I know we, we, we were skirting around it when we were talking about the Shiguru Kauai and their, their technology and research and development, but carbon fiber. Oh, the carbon fiber action, the Millennium 3 action is just, uh, I've... I mean, when they first came in here, we started calling people, and that people were showing up just to play them. And at conventions, at the uh, at the NAMM show, there's lines where people line up just to play a carbon fiber, not just any piano, but a carbon fiber grand piano mm -hmm. action. And so it's one of those things that's a, it's a magnet for players. Yeah, and so if you're uh, an, uh, just learning about pianos and how they how they work, if you think about a tennis racket, you think about a golf club, a bicycle. These are things that used to be made with different materials. As the modern world's progressed, they've changed to better materials. You think about a tennis racket, it used to be made out of wood. You, you swing a wood tennis racket like this and then pick up a carbon fiber one and swing it, what, where do you think it's gonna be faster, a faster swing? Well, not only faster, but the strength on it, the, the tensile strength when you hit it is, is a lot, it's, I mean, it's less giving on the wood and, and it's just it's power. Like Transfer power. Of it's a transfer of energy. Yeah, and which is again harking back to Kauai. It's a transfer of energy. So you think of a golf club made out of wood. It was a lot, a lot harder to swing a golf club out of wood or a tennis racket. Um, and then you you move on to these these modern ingredients, these modern materials, and the piano and musical instruments in general. It's very important to have wood as your sounding board, as the things that are going to make your instrument sound alive and sound warmth and sound resonant. It's very important for those. And we're gonna do a video on some tone woods. You guys make sure to check that one out. But is the action necessary to have a wooden component? And this was, a, it was a point that, that people were arguing for a little bit. And the Millennium 3 has been out since 2002 or 2003. People love it. Yeah, that action is, is very, um, that action is actually part of a historical step. And I wanted to go back to mention those Howard pianos when they first mm -hmm. came in, even though it was a product of Baldwin. When they first came in, I was a teenager. I went out and played those things. And the one thing I was amazed at is that the Kauai pianos that Baldwin was selling played better than the Baldwin pianos. They had a better action. And the Kauai action, would, to me, was just a lot, lot better. And if you look way over time, there's a lot less, because we've dealt in so many old, you know, 30, 40, 50 year old pianos, those Howard pianos, the actions are still consistent mm -hmm. uh, as, as they age a lot more gracefully than the Baldwin actions did. I don't mean to put down Baldwin, but if you're talking about just a, a manufactured piano from the production line, the Kauais were far superior. Mm -hmm. So this this has always been something near and dear to Kauai, and I think 
harkens back to why they're a family company, why they've been in business for so long. They really pour in into the research and development. How do we not transform a piano? They, they don't want to. They don't want to build no, something that's not a piano. Improvement. They're mm -hmm. always working toward improving and bringing more precision to the instrument. Mm -hmm. So that's our number. Our number five right there is the carbon fiber action. Just super. I, I feel like in a couple, in maybe 20, 30 years, it will be more sought after than, and it will be in more pianos than in sure. uh, than the alternative, which is wood. Mason and Hamlin has already made a carbon fiber action, and and it's just it's cool to see these technology advancements. That's not changing the piano, not to something different, to a digital no. instrument. It's really just strengthening and making it a more usable instrument. Perfecting it. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a, there's a new improvement, particularly this Millennial 3, when, it, when I went and played that, it was like, man, it's, you can really tell that it's, it's a wonderful instrument. It's going to make you want one. And so, and so stepping back even from the acoustic side of technology, we'd, we'd be remiss to not mention as our number six, their digital lines and their hybrid lines. So Kawhi is the only one who makes a digital piano. At the time of this video, making this video, they're the only ones that make a digital piano. It's officially called a hybrid piano, but a digital piano, all digital sounds, no strings, that has a wood soundboard on the back of it. It's called a CA-99, incredible. It incredible. uses that soundboard as the speaker. I don't mean to cut you off. That's an exciting digital piano. Mm -hmm. The first time I played one, it looks like an upright or it looks like a, a true real piano. And you sit down and you play it. And if you don't tell, a, anyone they think it's a real piano and then they, they i've had more people come up and ask about those particular pianos because they look in the back to see a soundboard wow man this is a neat thing yeah it's always in tune because mm -hmm. it's because it's a digital it's it's incredible it's it's thinking the next step how do i make this digital more acoustic and then on the flip side they're the only manufacturer at the time of this video the only manufacturer who puts it puts a touch screen control panel on an acoustic instrument. Yeah, that means anyone can go there and just pick and you see the instrument. It's got a grand piano, you hit it. It's got like a different kind of digital electric. It, we've done it. we've done videos on both of these. So the, the digital we were talking about is the CA-99. The acoustic with the touch control panel on the left cheek block is an Aurus system. A-U-R-E-S, an Aurus system. So they're really trying to, to branch acoustic and digital technology so that it's usable, it's what you want it's if you're looking for a digital where you need headphones and you need it lightweight you need to be able to move they have a digital for you that sounds like an acoustic instrument they're really trying to create that warmth that the acoustic speaker that wood soundboard projects and if you're looking for an acoustic instrument that can do digital things and you can play strings with your acoustic piano they do that and i i just i applaud them for that because it's very cool how they're connecting this technology so if you are looking at Kawhi brand, there's a whole spectrum um, that goes from full acoustic to full digital and everything you can think in, of. In between, too, the hybrids are just a wonderful, wonderful merge. Yeah, so number six is the hybrid and a digital technology that crosses over to the acoustic side of things. One of the best manufacturers that does that. Which leads us to number seven. The series. Know your series by Kawhi. It's really important to know exactly what you're looking for and make sure that you're looking at the right series. A lot of these pianos can look similar and they're very different. So behind us, what do we have? We have a K series, it's a K200 in Ferrari red, beautiful. But the K series is kind of, there. when you think of a traditional upright piano, it's gonna look, usually it's in black, but it's gonna look something like this. And they have an available finishes on it but kind of very straightforward, high polished, beautiful uprights. And that goes from the K15, there's a K200, K300, K400, K500, K800. And so those are just, it gets bigger in size. They get time. taller. Mm -hmm. They get taller and taller. So the K series, if you're looking for an upright, I'd highly recommend. If that's not the style for you, if you're looking for something a little more, what they call American made style, like the P22 by Yamaha, or these old Baldwin and Hamilton pianos, a um, little more boxy, a little bigger, bigger wheels at the bottom as well. You might be looking at an ST1. So that's just kind of a one-off, uh, but very highly sought after in institutions. It's, it's called the ST upright, ST1. And so those are your upright lines. When you move into the Grand Series, there are three different ones. There's the GL Series. So the GL Series starts off in Indonesian-made 
kind of like a lot of the manufacturers, they'll have an affordable piano that they kind of manufacture at a higher rate. So they have this GL10 and they've moved the GL20 into Indonesia as well. So the GL10 and GL20, and then at the GL30, it moves to the Japanese um, facility and the GL30, 40, and 50 um, are, and again, it's just size differences. Um, you get a little bit more length. The GL50, I think, tops off at about six foot two. And, uh, and then you move to a GX series. So in the grams, you got the GL series. The GX series is that. They call it the, B, the black series, the BLAK series. And that's the GX. So you have GX1 all the way up to GX7. And so that's kind of the top of the Kawhi line, the K Kawhi line. And you'll see at that point, the upgrades go into the SK series, which is Shiguru Kawai. So it doesn't say K Kawai or Kawai on the on the, the the fall board anymore. It says Shiguru Kawai in a very nice, beautiful gold. Like his signature. It's a gold font. It's beautiful. Uh, but that's the SK series. And you have the SK, I think it starts off at an SK2 and it goes up to about an SK7. Again, just size differences. So just be aware of what you're looking at because there are differences in where it's made and how it sounds, what it looks like, but really starts at SK again, GX, GL, those are the grands, and then K series in the uprights and the ST one if you're looking for something a little more uh, traditional in home. Which brings me, the ST, the American made, that American made idea, uh, brings me to my next point, the eight, made in America. Ted? That's an interesting part because uh, the Made in America, you threw me for a loop when you were giving me that little bit of history on Kauai because there was a little section I, I was unaware of. It's interesting because they're not the only ones who've done this. No, no. Yamaha and Kauai both had factories here in America. And a lot of times people don't realize that um, at a certain point it was cheaper for them to buy. In America, there was how many? Hundreds and hundreds oh, of manufacturers. One time we had over 12,000 manufacturers of pianos in this country. And so there was a lot of available going out of business manufacturing plants. And what Yamaha did and what Kawhi did was they went and found some that they liked and they, uh, they moved into their plant when they were going out of business. But Kawhi had a factory in North Carolina that opened in 1988 or 89. They opened up that factory and started building. It's really interesting. We see them every once in a while at Kawhi and you open it up. It's like made, made in America. Made in America. And they're just highly sought after because they're like, oh, I'm from North Carolina. I knew about this or I didn't know about this. And I really like American made things. It's, it's a stamp of quality. What's interesting, though, is that from a manufacturing standpoint, this happened 15 years before any auto manufacturer. I mean, now there's Toyotas, Hondas. There's all kind of um, Japanese made vehicles that are produced here in this country made in America. Mm -hmm. uh, the first major like expenditure item you could have that was like that were the pianos both mm -hmm. from Kauai and Yamaha having factories here in the country. Yeah so just very cool that Kauai had a factory here in, in the U.S. shows you how close the relationship was after that initial entry into Kauai America in the 60s and how, how established they were and how, how they could maintain this this plant here in the United States. Yamaha did it too. Both of those closed down in the early 2000s just because of labor cost and the, the decrease in demand in buying a piano. Well, at that time, as they closed those plants, those pianos were really wonderful instruments. Even the, the furniture-looking pianos that both uh, Kauai and Yamaha made here in the U.S., they, they played and sounded great. They, they had different kind of uh, lumbers in them mm -hmm. than, the, than the ones that were made in Japan. So uh, as a used uh, instrument market, the... Uh, those used pianos made in the USA, Kauai and Yamaha are ones that are really, you know, preferable. Yeah. And so number nine, this is a, a very cool piece of information. If, if you are looking at the very high-end Kauai's, there's this really cool thing that they do. Just that last little perk of buying a Shiguru Kauai. So they're most expensive pianos. And I would say they're... It's their top of the line product. There, it's, it's incredible. It's, if you haven't ever played one, again, you need to go find a dealer for Kauai and go play a Shiguru Kauai. They're just amazing instruments. But what they do, and the last step that they realized is so important in owning a piano, they will fly, they have a, a Japanese technician that will come to your house or to your university or to your concert hall, and they will sit with it for one whole day it's usually about six to eight hours. We, they, he's come to the store before and done, and done this to in, in our in-home Shiguru Kawais that we have here. 
they sit with it and they spend six to eight hours meticulously going over everything in it, voicing it to the room, voicing it to your liking, tuning it up. It's incredible to see how much precision, how much time they say, this is an incre- This is a precision instrument. This is a, a Ferrari. This is one of those things <laughs> that it, it can, the, the, that last step can make such a difference to the player. We are willing to invest in that, the, the closing final step and getting the right technician out to you. And it usually happens within the first year to two years of you owning it because this guy is going all the way around the country to people to people's houses, but they'll send a technician from Japan to come and do that in your home. You know, Just a, as a side note on that, remember we have posted that video of Doc playing that Shigeru Kawaii, that um, event that we held here. And the technicians came in and tuned and tempered that piano for about six hours. Mm-hmm. And then they came in a couple hours before, and uh, I got to play on that piano before before the video shooting and it is amazing when you sit down and and play uh, one of those pianos that's gone through with with the tech it's it's just incredible yeah to play an instrument like that and number 10 bringing it home Kawhi is the recipient of over 50 international piano awards that i mean that in itself is an accomplishment but, and and they don't rest on this and say oh we're an award-winning company that's built the piano the same way it's built it for years and years and all they this. look forward to those challenges every year every exposition every convention every time there's a competition with a, um, a multitude of manufacturers presenting their their pride and joy nine foot concert grants up there Kauai is the one that everyone is always got their eye on. Well, they're, they're looking at these, again, going back to research and development, what they're coming out with and how they're transforming product lines and product divisions of music retail and, mm. and musical instruments. It's, it's amazing to see something like the MP11, which is their stage piano, be one of the highest sought after, highest, I don't think that's well, the, they... the highest sought after instruments. And then you look at the, the Shiguru line, also highest sought after. And then you look at the CA series that they released recently. All these are, are award-winning product categories because they've taken the time. They're not just going to release. They're not going to just add a number at the end yeah, or, add, right, or right. change one little detail and say, oh, it's a new, it's a new thing. There's no software updates. On that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just incredible to see this company that cares so much about what they put their name on. And it's being able to play those instruments. The art of piano. There's no other way to explain it. It's the art of piano and... With Kawhi, it's almost devoid of a player. It's mm-hmm. just like this is the instrument. The player is who they're making it for. Mm-hmm. And the amount of de- desirability of an instrument in an instrument that they create for, for every musician um, is just incredible. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, of course, Kawhi is an ama- amazing manufacturer. If you are looking at one, we wanted to, to bring you the top 10 things that we think transform their their product offerings and why they are who they are. And I, we applaud you for looking at them as an option. Um, there's some great piano lines out there and we look forward to doing this for some other manufacturers because mm-hmm. um, it's just, it's very interesting to delve in and see where did they start? What what do they stand behind? Where do they progress to? And what it, where they are today and looking forward in the future? Well, I mean, if you look at Kauai, you, you look at their history and you're immediately involved with Yamaha, mm-hmm. you become involved with Baldwin, and then you become involved with Steinway & Sons. So these are, I mean, four of the top piano manufacturers of the last 50 years, uh, 60 years, even longer than that. Yeah, um, In- incredible, incredible history, rich history, but really they've always had their eyes looking forward at wh- where they can take the piano industry. Again, we're Alamo Music Center. This is Ted Barcelona and Patrick Moore. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos. Thanks.